This is exactly right. Okay, great. This is my side. Hi. <laughs> no, this is my side. Oh, we can share. We can this share. This is, I think by the end of the night, I'm going to pass out. <laughs> this is too much. Also, I do not like, there's like full butt side oh, at yeah. certain times. There's just nothing you can do. Hey, I'm, I've been laying on the couch for two years. <laughs> How does it look? How about this? Let's just talk to, e uh, talk to each other. <laughs> this is like some terrible uh, like political special on Comedy Central. It looks really act like our opinions matter the most. <laughs> this is a first. Hi. Yeah. Yeah. I can tell my guilt's just kicking in because I just feel really bad for everyone immediately behind me. That's Every right. Every time I move, I'm I like, think I'm that's sorry. how it's supposed to work. Oh, and now... Constant... Oh, are you mad? Okay, then are you mad? <laughs> it's like Thanksgiving. Uh, but ha <laughs> Have you noticed, Karen? We've already started to turn. Yo, yeah. Let's... I, I thought my pill was kicking in, but... <laughs> It turns out. Let's do this. Let's have a moment of silence for one whole rotation. <laughs> and then... Just can everybody be quiet, please? <laughs> um, yeah, this is, this is Caesar-inducing. For listen, the first thing that needs to happen is I have to apologize my, to, for my hair. <laughs> for the second night in a row, my hair has gone insane. I can't control it. I didn't bring the, the proper instruments to get into it and train it. I'm using a very small straightener as a curling iron, which a lot of you know is a huge mistake. <laughs> you, sir, you know what that's like. It's it looks not... good back here. Does it? Yeah. Well, that's the part I was worried about. Also front. <laughs> oh, you just can't win in show business. So I did have to, uh, for, a, for a live show first, have to lint roll my back. <laughs> Oh, shit. I Did didn't you? even check mine. No, you're good. You're good. I do the thing where I do eyeshadow for like two hours straight, and then, I, and then they're like, it's time to go. And I'm like, but oh, <laughs> there's so much more than eyeshadow to be taken care of on this thing. How's it? Okay. We're still... Uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm not bigger. sure. Do we do this? Where, where did we come in? But we're going to be... Behind, but you're going to get mad in a minute. We can't, we can't be attached to their emotions. Okay. We can't. We can't. We just have to come here and do our thing. Okay. Right? I kind of love this. I feel like we are only going to have, what is this called? In the round. Uh, I feel like we might need to be doing some Sondheim numbers. That's what I would like to be <laughs> doing. Isn't that what usually goes on in here? There's a lot of this kind of a <laughs> type of shit. You, you kind of can't not want to do a run around high five thing. Right? <laughs> you can. I have a sprained ankle, but oh, you take a, take a lap. No. Take a lap. Okay. It'll be fun. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm tired. Keep going. I'm tired. Don't stop. <laughs> Why am I doing this? <laughs> Keep I going. think I hit you guys already. Keep going. No, you okay. didn't get them. You didn't get I them. Didn't get them. <laughs> 
also have a bad back. See how many rounds I can make you do? <laughs> now they're mad. Oh, no. Oh, God. <laughs> this reminds me of last night. We were texting each other in the, the hotel room, which we'll get to after the show, both watching the Stone Cold Steve Austin. That's what that felt like. Yep. That Broken felt like, Skull Camp or whatever. Yeah. Have you guys seen this? It's on CMT. It's Stone Cold Steve Austin's... Uh, like American Ninja Warrior style? Yeah, but just with like the hottest men you've ever seen. And they're like, Stone Cold Steve Austin's like, buddy, are you ready? And they're like, yes, sir. And then they throw a fucking huge log on their shoulder and run straight up a hill. And you're just like, yes. And Stone Cold Steve Austin's so sweet. He's not like everyone else. He's like, you was. He's like, you got this, kiddo. You can do this. There he goes. Wow. It's like so sweet. We were in, of course, separate rooms last night. It would be cute if we were in the same room, but we're adults. And, <laughs> but we do these shows and then we go, we immediately go back to our hotel, hotel and like lay in bed with our eyes open. Like, oh, there's so much adrenaline. What just happened? And then we watch terrible TV. So I texted her and I was like, please tell me you're watching Steve Austin's Broken Skull Camp or whatever the fucking name of the show is. And then they turned it on and I got so into it. My favorite contestant, his name was Mac. He ended up winning. Thank you. And, um, <laughs> spoiler and, alert. And, uh, he was clearly, I think in the military, yeah. very used to being yelled at by a stone cold Steve Austin style voiced man. Yeah. And every, he would be in the middle. And I mean, these, these, the thing, the challenges they'd have to do is, is like basically scale the face of a building with no help, <laughs> like insane things. With their shirt off. Yeah. Too. Yeah. Um, but this guy would be in the middle of doing this thing, like climb a wall of tires or whatever. And Stone Cold Steve Austin would be standing on the side going, you got this buddy, you got this Mac. And then the guy, as he's climbing, he's like, thank you. He said, thank you. <laughs> Every time Steve Austin encouraged him. He in definitely the, had like a, when he, they were like, Mac, you ready? And he was just like, do, 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 actively. And you're yeah. like, oh my God, someone raised you well. That's nice. <laughs> For once, not him, but pe you know, people. He's just so positive about obstacle courses. It was just, I don't know, it's inspiring. And we'd love you guys oh. to watch it. So we have the Stone Cold Steve Austin Ranch here for Karen to try. <laughs> I was, we were talking about how long we would have lasted based on my, lap around here i'm winded <laughs> that's stage one on broken skull <laughs> camp you have to do a circle high five and you said three days later we would just be sitting there you'd be smoking cigarettes on one of the obstacle courses yeah 100 percent. i would have gone there early and hidden them around the obstacle course <laughs> Why are we talking about a different TV show? I don't know. <laughs> well, we don't have a TV show. Um, uh, anyhow, this is, it is, there's a little bit of like a, a, a look at us, we're at the disco feel to this <laughs> in a way that I've never participated in and it's very foreign to me. Yeah. I'm like, hey, what's up? Da, 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 da. Mm -hmm. I feel like we're supposed to be doing like a, a silent play, like a one-on-one -on -one where we have this like, you know, you're, it's like a, so tell me about the night of the, da, 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 and I'm like, <laughs> like you're questioning me? Yeah, yeah. Walking around the room, right. and then I'd also walk around the room right. being questioned. That'd be fun. Usually the qu person being questioned sits. Yes. I'd fucking get up and walk too. <laughs> Let's see. Let me answer your question, <laughs> detective. Huh. <laughs> um... Oh, I insulted our cab driver today really bad. Yeah. Well, he started it, He though. started it. He fully started it himself. Listen. Look. He... Listen. <laughs> right? That's the first one. Ten more, and you win ten dollars. <laughs> <laughs> he was really sweet, though, but he, he fucking started it. He goes... We were, he's like, what are you guys doing in town? And... The, our answer, it's really easy. It's easier than explaining this fucking thing. You just go, oh, we're doing a comedy show. Yeah. Because then you don't have to get into... Uh, explaining to uh, old people what podcasts are. Or <laughs> <laughs> no offense, and young people. A lot of people have no idea what that little purple button on their phone is for. <laughs> just don't. They never looked at it. That or explaining how you love murder, but you don't love murder. Right. So you're just, we're doing a comedy show. And he was like, oh, great. No cab ride is long enough for that explanation. No. Just like, can you no. go around the block again? I just want to talk to you about when I was little. 
I saw this book. <laughs> and he goes, oh, which one of you ladies are funnier? What? Yeah, see? She- Icy silence in the cab. Karen I mean, dead I. fucking silent. Absence of sound in the cab. Like our therapist should have hologrammed us. <laughs> and been like, There's no good answer for this. This this is actually a real issue uh, that you brought up, psychic asshole cab driver. Good job. But it's not. Like, clearly, we don't give a shit. But it's like, how the fuck do you answer that? You either sound like you're like, I'll let Karen be the funnier one, and I'll Uh, say Karen. No, it's her. It's definitely her. We're just both being phony. We would both have gone, it's me. But that's impolite, (laughs) right? Oh, of ourselves? It's me. Oh, as a joke. Yeah. It's me. It's me. But instead, Georgia solved this he problem. Goes, Which of you two ladies, or that's what he yeah. said? Ladies are funnier, and I, when there's dead silence, and I go, what did I say? I think it's you, sir. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and she I, fucking slammed the cab driver into the ground emotionally, practically chipped his fucking tooth. He was like, whoa, sorry, sorry, everybody, me too. He really sounded... I'm not a lady. Like, he really sounded bummed. He was bummed out. (laughs) And then, but I said, well, because he, of course, when you say you're here to do a comedy show, he made a joke about, oh, I'll pull over and you guys can get out and do a comedy show for me. And we're like, ha, 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 keep fucking driving. And... (laughs) So then after Georgia said that, and of course she and I start fucking cackling like assholes. <laughs> and then I go, see, there's your comedy show for you right there. <laughs> he was like, uh, your hotel's right here. Yeah. He got us. He Get did out. not help us with our bags. No, that's right. He didn't. No. And he told me I'm disinvited to Christmas this year. <laughs> Damn it. <clears throat> um, so the, the room is spinning. <laughs> The room is spinning, and... I mean, okay. Yep. Thanks. No. We're so excited to be here with you guys. Yeah. Thank you for waiting for so long. (laughs) Yeah. This is is the first. What? uh, What? What? Just tell me. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> well, I sprained my ankle. Do you oh, want me to tell right. that story? Please tell everyone why you This couldn't... is the saddest thing in the world because we're now... So when we're on tour, we just have to... We're just constantly walking places, dragging suitcases with us. Mm-hmm. That's just all we do. Then we do shows, and then we go drag suitcases some more. Mm-hmm. And I am putting such a cramp in our airport speed style because I'm like... And I'm trying to be kind of chill about it. It's not like... I sprained it last Sunday, so it's definitely getting better, but it... Every once in a while, it just hurts like fuck. So then you don't want to get into the realm where it might you might go that direction. So I just am a little, a little bit like a little faster oh. than you really. It looks oh, like I'm no. trying to just constantly say excuse, oh, excuse me, sir, <laughs> but I'm not. Um, I, I would have the highest of stilettos on oh, right you now know if she it would. weren't. <laughs> you know me and how much I love my Melanie or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of her thing. Jenny, cheers. <laughs> she, we were, I can't remember what show we were working on, but I said, we, it was some shitty show, like it was a pilot for E. And of course, you've all seen E for at least seven minutes. Um, <laughs> you know what they're doing over there. And so they kept bouncing back all our ideas. They were just like, that's too weird. We don't understand it. We, what's this comedy or whatever? And finally I typed up a whole idea that was called shoes, 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 shoes. <laughs> they didn't like it. <laughs> I thought you were going to say, and they gave me a million dollars to make it. <laughs> I'm Kim Kardashian, everybody. <laughs> I didn't, I, I know so little. I don't know if you, I told you this. These are like fucking Target shoes. Yeah. Uh, oh, wait a second. Why don't you do the whole outfit oh. and let's see the specialty item on that dress. Oh, fuck. Yeah. <laughs> Did I throw those? <laughs> you threw the mic. Oh. There's a sound guy that's fucking so livid right now. Sorry. Beyond livid. I'm so sorry. He brought these from home. Also... Watching a person run in a circle with their hands in their pockets is insanity. <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen that in my life. It was really fun. It was, do it again. No. 
Well, we have three more running in circles for the show. Oh, okay, so great. So we're gonna great. we're gonna save them. Yes, yeah, save them for the um, middle and then second half. Right, right, right. Great. Uh, what about you? Do you want to talk about your outfit? Oh, Target twenty nine ninety nine. I can't be bothered. Unzips, I can't be bothered. Unzips to the belly button. And zips to where I want it to go. Right. Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh wait, this is my favorite murder of the podcast. <laughs> where? Yeah. Thank you. Oh, <laughs> I just in moments like that, I just love to picture the people who work here who are like, "What the fuck is going on? <laughs> what is wrong with these? Who and why? And, and, why? and where? There's a mean to cab drivers it's all the so, time. Who cares about your cab ride and your shoes? <laughs> um, no. Stephen's not here though. Oh yeah, sorry that. about that, <laughs> Stephen. Steven's under the stage, cranking it around. <laughs> He's carrying it in a circle. They said, no, 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 we have a whole machine for that. And we're like, take it out. And Steven's going to do it. He's going to push it. <laughs> He's got three cats behind him whipping him. Sweat dripping off his mustache. It's just, he can barely record. <laughs> his headphones are so cumbersome, but we are like, leave him <laughs> we passed a booth at the airport today and it was um, it had all these headphones and one of them were headphones that had cat ears on top of the headphones yeah. was it you or Vince that were like we should get those for Steven and force him to wear them while we record <laughs> just like well sorry part of your job is now you have to dress like a cat around us <laughs> sorry it's the only way my cats will like you yeah. it's my new thing if you don't like it talk to HR <laughs> that's us <laughs> there is no HR. <laughs> Should we? No, I wasn't going to say sit down. Before. You weren't? Do you want me to? I don't know what I want anymore. <laughs> I don't want to make you guys hate us, but these hotel rooms last night that we stayed in. Oh, shit. We're going to keep talking about them. Dude, for the rest of the show. <laughs> we stayed at a casino, and for some reason they... Didn't, must not have known who we were and that what we'll accept is very low because <laughs> they put us they thought we were two Celine Dion's yeah. because they put us in these suites Karen goes we're all walking down the hallway together and Vince and I like Karen goes in and Vince and I keep walking and we hear her go holy shit <laughs> <laughs> and it like echoed and we we're like what's going on it was like there was so much marble in yeah. one room I was like is this the Taj Mahal because <laughs> oh my god uh four TVs four bathrooms two bedrooms heated seats there's on the toilets everyone. is that what you Toilet seats is yeah. what I meant. Where else do you sit in your house? Am I wrong? I actually, I'll admit, I just would go in and sit on that toilet. <laughs> Heated seats and bidet that you could just adjust as you were sitting there where I was like, in countries where bidets are normal, how do people ever get know. off these fucking things? I'm sorry, but they're great. I mean, they're I, so great. They're great. And they had, okay, this is inappropriate. They had also a front bidet. Yeah. <laughs> I texted you as a pussy bidet. That's right. So You're allowed to say it. It's 2018. Then I got stuck. <laughs> right? And put on your little hat and sit on the bidet. All last night I was singing, she wore a pussy bidet in my head. I was like, Georgia, what is wrong with you? And now I'm singing it on a circular stage. Yeah. To paying customers. <laughs> I hope like, there's like not an old couple here who has like season tickets to this theater. <laughs> I'm sca so scared. If that's true, this is a true crime crime. Uh oh, this is a true crime comedy podcast. Yeah. How does that work, Karen? <sighs> oh, thanks. Yeah. You don't get to pick one of those things. They've come together. That's right. Uh, you, it's not your choice. <laughs> <laughs> we can't help it. And um, if you don't like it, get the fuck out. That's usually what we say. That's, it's rude. It's rude, but it's what we usually say to everybody. 
as a you know as a warm up pillow, <laughs> you know, to get the crowd we, on we our ask side. People to leave, <laughs> and then we cackle into the microphone. Okay. Oh, that's not. Uh oh. Oh oh no. Are you kidding me? No, I saw it. This I is know what you do. This is mayhem. This is mayhem. And whose water is whose? Oh, no. I think this is mine. I've only taken a sip of mine. I keep drinking your drinks. This is by mine. I this. think. No, okay. it, this is my near my You're paper. Right. Mm, okay. Shit, we should have rehearsed this. I'm so sorry, <laughs> you guys. I'm so sorry. Isn't, we both missed rehearsal. This is the dress rehearsal, right? This is dress. This is tech dress, okay. and then tomorrow night is the full show. Okay, great. All right. When I do my hair with an actual curling iron. <laughs> Let's sit down. Okay. Oh. It's sit down time. Partly. Oh, I guess that makes sense. If we face you, well, face in. I'm getting a little nauseous, seasick. So this is perfect time to sit down. Um, I love this rug. I've got to say. This what? Normally we have. Oh. Normally we have kind of like um. A rug, a that, beige rug, a beige rug, or a, a oriental rug that looks like someone spent their last forty dollars at Pier One. <laughs> but this, do you have Pier One here? It's a, one, it's a wonderful store. If you don't, <laughs> wonderful old sh- European shipped-in <laughs> cookies that are from like seven years ago. They're on mm, sale. Delicious. Anyway, I love a pop of color in the middle of a rotating stage. I do love it. So everyone knows where to focus their eyeballs. That's right. With America's number one meal kit, HelloFresh, you'll get easy seasonal recipes and pre-measured ingredients delivered right to your door. All you have to do is cook and enjoy. HelloFresh makes cooking delicious meals at home a reality. From step-by-step recipes to pre-measured ingredients, you'll have everything you need to get a wow-worthy dinner on the table in about 30 minutes. Say goodbye to endless grocery store trips and takeout. HelloFresh has you covered. There's something for everyone, from family recipes to calorie smart and vegetarian, and fun menu series like Hall of Fame and and Craft Burgers. HelloFresh has more five-star recipes than any other meal kit, so you'll know you're getting something incredible. HelloFresh is flexible, and it fits your lifestyle, easily change your delivery days, food preferences and skip a week whenever you need break out of your dinner rut and make deliciousness part of every week with hello fresh i love that even though hello fresh is super easy and they make it really basic and like straightforward you still feel like you're cooking this like incredible home cooked dinner and that makes me feel good about myself and that instead of just ordering takeout i'm actually making something and preparing something at home and that just it feels good so for 80 dollars off your first month of hello fresh go to hellofresh.com slash murder 80 and enter murder 80 it's like receiving eight meals for free only at hellofresh.com slash murder 80 promo code murder 80 Go by. Okay, I'm going first. Tonight. Oh, that's right. Right? That's right. Okay. That's right. Georgia goes first. Thank you. All right. Okay. <clears throat> this. <laughs> what if this controlled the stage? <laughs> like a, a weird bus steering wheel. Uh, and I want to go the opposite way. Uh. Teacups. Right. What? It's like the teacups. Teacups. But really slow. <laughs> and with microphones. Uh, Phoenix, this is your your trunk murders. Oh. I don't know the trunk okay. murders. All right. I'm trying to remember what photos I... There she is. Oh. That works. <laughs> Solved it. Okay. So that, that your, your, is your friend Winnie Ruth McKinnell. Uh, she goes by Ruth. I have to, sorry, I don't know. A lot of nicknames. On. Nicknames in this one. I gotta take a look at Winnie. What if she just fucking ass over tea kettles off the stage? <laughs> I sprained my other ankle. Come on! She's doing it for attention. I, she has a nice finger wave, am I wrong? Yes, you are right. Okay. But is she the bad one? Yes, she is. Okay. Maybe. Oh. Or maybe not. Spoiler alert. <laughs> <laughs> you just said that with so much anger. I know. <laughs> no, I'm I hate everything. <laughs> okay, she's born January 29th, 1905 in Indiana. She moves to Phoenix as an adult after marrying a dude who I'm never going to mention again. Uh, what? Oh, he's a physician, spent a lot of time on the road, and also on morphine. You so. said you weren't going to mention anything about him. That's all, again. Oh, he spent time on the road and on morphine? Yep. (laughs) I stepped on your joke. I'm sorry. Want me to say, I'll say it again. Do it again. So 
at 26 years old, our friend Ruth here takes a job as a medical secretary in a Phoenix clinic to support herself. At this time, she meets a, a friend named John J. Halloran, whose nickname is Happy Jack. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to guess. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I yes. was going to say jinkies. I don't know why. <laughs> nope, it's Happy Jack. Happy Jack Halloran. Uh-huh. So I that th- means he's a drunk, right? <laughs> <laughs> he's a 44-year-old, well-to-do Phoenix businessman. He's, like, in the political and social circles. He's, like, well-known dude. He's married, but that doesn't stop him from getting laid by he's other happy women. Because he's Happy Jack. <laughs> Woo! He's, um... <laughs> So Ruth and Happy Jack become friendly. They start hooking up. Uh, Also, she meets at work a woman named Agnes Ann Leroy. She's a 32-year-old x-ray technician who worked at the clinic. And her roommate, 24-year-old Hedvig Samuelson. (laughs) I mean, these are some old fucking fashion names. Who's named Agnes anymore? I hope someone. Yeah. Some someone asshole in LA named their child that. Like, <laughs> there's a four year old running around. Someone, yeah. In Whole Aggie, Foods. Aggie, don't touch the kale. What did mommy t- <laughs> What did mommy tell you about the fresh salmon? <laughs> we only eat organic, Aggie. Okay. She uh, unfortunately Hedvig is going by Sammy, so unfortunately we don't have that name in our lives okay. anymore. Okay. Um, I think we have a photo of Happy Jack. There he is. <laughs> he seems like a hoot. <laughs> What's up, Jackie boy? That's a that's a well, oval cranium, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> Back then, I was a, that was an insane slam. <laughs> you sir have an oval cranium. Good day. I said good day. <laughs> Thoughts, feelings. Well. I just had, I just thought of last night, we did a story last night where there, <laughs> it was the Binion's murder um, in Las Vegas. Mm-hmm. And there was somebody in the story, I can't remember who it was, who referred to having sex as laying pipe. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's it, true. It wasn't us. It was someone truly. It was a direct quote. It was a <laughs> Wikipedia rip. <laughs> yeah. Rips from the Wikipedia. So I was just going to say, but it's a, it's an old reference that, some people wouldn't get, which is, that guy lays pipe? <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, tons of pipe. So much pipe. Yeah. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> He's like the Department of Energy, that guy. <laughs> fucking laying pipe. Um, so Agnes and Sammy are also friendly with our f- happy friend, and they all become friends. Ruth even moves in with the two women for a couple months in 1931. <clears throat> they are all, like, kind of obsessed with Happy Jack, financially Why? and emotionally. I don't know, man. He took care of them somehow. He gave, he fed needs that, I guess, a physician and morphine addict husband <laughs> can't fulfill. You check their pulse, but really slow. <laughs> Stuff like that. So, okay. And then um, they were, but they were all super defensive for Jack's attention. I don't know. Oh, okay. They all loved him. So, unfortunately, I wrote, the women weren't as woke as we are today. So differences <laughs> developed <laughs> between Ruth and the other two women. A, a, I guess it was just jealousy over happy. I wrote, this is so stupid. <laughs> Reported to be jealousy over happy Jack's happy Jack. That doesn't make any sense. That's stupid. (laughs) Stupid. Cut that out. Uh, (laughs) If it's there, you got to say it. I mean, I wrote it, like, and I left it in after, like, 17 rereads. You believed in it. I clearly had some fucking thing in my mind. You liked it until you were in the round. Yeah. And then it got scary. Yeah, but I felt like... I needed to be honest. Okay, soon. So fucking Ruth got the fuck out of there, moved out into her, back into her own apartment um, close by. Really quick Let's clarification. Yeah. So they were all fucking Happy Jack? I don't know. It's really hard to tell. Like, I think Ruth definitely was fucking Happy Jack. I think. Okay. And maybe somebody else. And maybe they were others were in love. Maybe these two women were in a relationship together. It's kind of hard to tell. Oh, okay. So we don't really it's know. It's all very vague, and it's like, good close friends. Right. Stuff like that. Exactly. Okay. okay. I think there's a photo of the two ladies as well. Lifelong roommates. Oh, oh yes. Agnes, there's the lifelong roommates. Agnes Ann 
uh, Leroy and Sarah Hedvig Sammy. So Agnes and it's Anne and Sammy are their names. I'm like, Agnes and Hedvig, come on. Come on, you guys. Those are the best names. Okay. Boop, 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 boop. Do, 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 do. Okay. They're not as woke. Everyone leaves. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's not true. <laughs> Ruth leaves. Okay. But I guess they're all still friends. So here's the story of the murder according to police and prosecutors. It's this. On the night of October 16th, 1931, Agnes and Sammy, the roomies, um, have a heated argument with Ruth over Happy Jack's affection. And then I read all these other articles, and it could also have been over someone who had a friend who had syphilis, and they were going to tell on her. Or it could have been over a friend who was a lesbian, and they all thought about it. it they were eating rice pudding. Maybe it was about the rice pudding. I don't know. <laughs> it's really hard to tell. All we know is there was a fight about a thing. And there was rice pudding. Oh, for real? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> they were eating rice pudding. Like, that's all we know. <laughs> Was this on a recipe website that you got this story? <laughs> Stir in three tablespoons <laughs> of murder. Hate. Uh, so they all get in a fight. Ruth fucking grabs a gun. I guess it was her gun that she had left behind for some reason. And they start fighting. And, sh and Ruth shoots Agnes and Sammy with a 25 caliber handgun. In the, there in the bungalow. She fucking kills both of those ladies right there. The way you, you said she shot them in, in the, the bungalow. bungalow. Like, I knew that would be weird. That was an old fashioned way to yeah. say. Right in the bungalow. Right in that bungalow. Right in the old. <laughs> right in the front door of the bungalow. <laughs> okay. So then Ruth and, and maybe an accomplice dismember the body of Sammy and. Okay, it gets gross. Puts her head, torso, and lower legs into a black shipping trunk and Sammy's upper legs in a beige valise and hat box. So this fucking Did little... Did you just call her arms her upper legs? <laughs> <laughs> because that's rad. <laughs> Did you? No! Oh. <laughs> no. Oh, her... You s other legs? Upper legs. Thighs. I uh, copied and pasted. You have got to proofread <laughs> her upper leg. <laughs> Did you, you know just... how you have your legs, but then if you pull on them, more leg comes out? Okay, that the extra leg was in the other trunk. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I had called arms upper legs so bad. I'm so mad and I didn't do that. Next time. I'm crying. <laughs> Don't cry oh, in the round. Oh, good, good Lord. <laughs> There's no crying in the round. <laughs> my, right. my. There's no crying in the round. <laughs> um, no, it was her upper legs. So, how did, who wrote this? It wasn't me. <laughs> her head, torso, and lower legs, and then her upper legs, and yeah, where the fuck is the rest of her body? There's not a ton of body left after that. <laughs> Neck? Where's the neck? <laughs> Where did they put that fucking neck? Listen, I want to know. We are professional. <laughs> I can't tell you how badly... There's two microphones on the ground right there, like, for the hometown, and I just want to lay down and start telling my story into one of them. <laughs> so bad. Just take a rest. You can. Stretch your upper legs out and just take a rest. You got to. Take some mute time. We are on the first page of this. <laughs> we just fucking started. Yeah, the, like, the, the people working here are texting their honeys like, it's going to be a long night, baby. I'm not, I'm not going to get home by 3.30. I'm not going to make it. Sorry. Sorry. Um, there's just these two fucking women. <laughs> you know. <laughs> da, 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 da. Okay, everything. Okay, and then, Ag and then Agnes's body. I feel like Ruth, after dismembering Sammy's body, is like, fuck this shit. And she puts Agnes's whole body into a second black shipping trunk. I mean, it's hard to get a bunch of stuff done at once anyway. Yeah. It had to be. Like, the, it ha there had to be an accomplice, right? She's like a little thing, and she's dismembering. I guess, mm, I don't know. By herself? I mean, yeah, probably not. I would hope so, just for the impact alone of just... I mean, Probably not. Okay. Sorry. Wait, we lost you, didn't we? <laughs> <laughs> so maybe Happy Jack was there, right? Sure. Okay. So two days later, so the body's 
are in the thing. Two days later, on Sunday, October 18th, 1931, Ruth, whose left hand was bandaged from apparently a gunshot wound sustained during the fight, so she's got a fucking bullet in her hand, and she discovered the bodies? No, that doesn't make any sense. Yeah, that's a little crazy. It would take forever. It, just going on how long it takes me to get around the airport, <laughs> it would take a really fucking long time yeah. to dismember a body with a shot hand. I also like the idea that happened in the house. Yeah. It was just like gunfight in the house. Uh huh. Okay. It's still, the house still stands. Is Let's, this true? After party in the. Yes. Get on the bus. <clears throat> Let's drive to a house and then just drive away because you can't go inside. Someone lives there. They're like <laughs> raising children and they have a life and they don't want you there. Da, da, da. Okay, so with her hand and her luggage, she boards a train from Phoenix uh, to um, Los Angeles. She gets to Los Angeles the next morning. The baggage agent at the train is like, why the fuck are there fluids escaping these baggages? And oh my God, it also stinks. That is uh. not a direct quote. I wrote that. <laughs> you I, are taking real liberties with I this story. I am paraphrasing. So sorry, the trunks arrive in LA and there's fluid uh -huh. coming out of them? And they smell. No, cool. Because it's been three or four days now. So he's like, I'm going to tag these and move these aside. Good Smart. Call. Good um, call. He asks Ruth for the key and she's like, I don't have it. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> and so her brother picks her up and she um, disappears. Her brother doesn't know anything about the crimes. Uh, and leaves the trunks behind. Later that day, police came to the train station to check out the trunks. They cracked the lock, and they discovered the bodies. There is a photo of it online. Don't worry, I didn't post it. I don't know if it's real. It looks real. And it's them looking into a trunk it's with a dead body inside? A sh it's just the body. It's fucked up. Okay. okay. I have seen some things. This was back when the police... When a crime would happen, someone would be murdered, right? And mm -hmm. then they're laying there dead. And then the police would gather around. And then they'd be like, oh, wait, sorry. Hey, reporters, get in here. <laughs> We're investigating a, a crime. <laughs> Come on. Let me, hold on. Let me look smart. Oh, Ooh. hey. Uh, I think we have a photo of the trunks, though. And don't worry. I don't think the bodies are. Yeah, there they are. Oh. Ooh, they look old timey. They look like something that'd be on sale at a store in Beverly for like $4,000. Oh, totally. Yeah. Fucking LA. And it's like, repurpose trunks <laughs> for four thousand. Fuck everything. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so they're like, oh shit, they found the bodies. Okay. But so after leaving the station, Ruth hid out for several days, still with a fucking bullet in her hand. It's now turning uh, into gangrene. Sure. Yeah. And she then finally is like, this isn't working. Surrenders to the police uh, on October 23rd, 1931. <laughs> This isn't working. <laughs> As she like tries to take a handful of grapes or whatever and they just keep falling through the hole. This is insane. I can't live like this anymore. 911, what's your emergency? <laughs> well, okay. I need grapes. Okay. <laughs> I'm starving for grapes. <laughs> the murder is like crazy headlines across the country. They call her the tiger woman and the blonde butcher. And eventually, the case comes to be known as the Trunk Murders, and she's the, tr the Trunk Murderess. Here's a photo of her when she turned herself in. How fucking glamorous. Oh, my God. Is this real? <laughs> it looks like the remake in the 70s of her, doesn't it? Can you see it? Go yes, see it. I can see it, but also... You have to get up. From here, it, uh, it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> From uh, here, it looks like her head is so much bigger than her body that it looks like one of those illustrations you get at Disneyland where you're like, I like skateboarding and horses or whatever. <laughs> and then your head is like this and your body's this big skateboarding. Anyway, hold on. This is weird. <laughs> this is real quick. I, I want to watch you watch. I have to get LASIK. <laughs> Let's do it right now. That's... First of all, does she have a fox stole on her shoulder? Yes, because she fucking stole that fox stole <laughs> yeah, from she like did. Up this like place she went to to hide out. That's for real? Yeah. Oh, that's factual? Yeah. That I mean, that sounded like total bullshit. <laughs> well, I blame the one article I read that oh. in then. <laughs> at, at, on upperlegs.com. <laughs> Upper legs. Upper legs. God damn it. Okay. <laughs> Um, boop, 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 dee, 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 dee. So that's her okay. showing up at the police station yeah. like, oh, I did it. Yeah. And I'm here to say I did it. Yeah. And my hand hurts. Maybe it smells. <laughs> Maybe it's Maybelline. 
<laughs> okay, so at this point, Phoenix police had already found the crime scene at the bungalow. Um, and at that point, neighbors and reporters had been like, do 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 all over the, like stomping on the, everything in the crime scene. As they, you know how they always do that? Yeah, they, they, it's uh, after police invite reporters in, and yeah. they used to be like, now let's get the neighbors, <laughs> right. this street. Okay, now the next street. We'll Can go you, south. Yeah. We're not any more footprints on the walls, please. <laughs> There's any children that want to see this murder yeah. up close. Let's get them in front. Touch everything, please. Okay. So, in fact, a day after the crime scene was found, the bungalow's landlord put an ad in the newspaper, and I'm going to guess it was like, free tours of the bungalow for 10 cents per piece. <laughs> free tours. No, that's not a free tour. Tours of the bungalow for 10 cents a piece. That's right. That doesn't, there you go. Um, blah, blah, blah. Over the next three weeks, hundreds of curiosity seekers, aka fucking old timey murderinos, right? Mm-hmm, that's right. <laughs> oh, we've been around for a long, long time. <laughs> murderinos? There hasn't been a murderino. <laughs> I just stole your bit. You gotta do it. I was emulating you. No, my, it's stolen from one million other people. <laughs> Good. The, ha- the Haunted Prospector is a bit that's been around for generations. <laughs> Um, okay. So then the police, the police theorized that Agnes and Sammy were shot while asleep. Also, they weren't really sure. The mattress is like one disappeared, one was found with no blood stains on it though. So clearly that's not what happened. Uh, at her trial in 1932, uh, the dismemberment aspect of the double slaying is never addressed in court because Ruth was tried only for the murder of, uh, Leroy, whose body was not dismembered and never tried for the murder of Sammy. For some reason. Uh, Happy Jack was present at the trial every day, but never spoke on record and was never called as a witness. And people think it's because he had a lot of connections in the scene. Oh, yeah. I saw his suit. Yeah. Sweet. Yeah. Three-piecer. Or maybe anything to do with it. I don't fucking know. Okay. The state argued that she acted with premeditation and that she inflicted the gunshot wound to her hand to try to bolster her claim of self-defense. But then I'm like, well, why run then? If you're like, boom, I shot my hand. Now let me chop the bodies up and leave. And just, yeah. You know. And get gangrene. This is the right. perfect alibi. <laughs> yeah. um, so on February 8th, 1932, Ruth is found guilty and sentenced to die by hanging. Whoa, in L.A.? No, or in here. Phoenix. Oh, okay. Yeah. No, don't worry. We're... <laughs> we would never. <laughs> we're not like that. Well, L.A., we're so decent. <laughs> So, oh, she was sentenced to die on Good Friday. You're friends with that day. We love that day in Catholicism. We made it up. (laughs) But finally, uh, at that point, she was like, all right, fuck this shit. I'm not getting fucking hung. She told her lawyer she wants, I want to talk. And that Jack, Happy Jack, had told her her that to exonerate something of something, uh, (laughs) that if she agreed that... that, uh, had said that it was her fault and an an accident, she would have gotten off. So don't say that I was involved, basically. So Jack was like, I was involved, but say I wasn't and everything will be fine. Oh, right. She was like, guess what? He was involved. But um, her death sentence is overturned after a 10-day hearing because they found her now mentally incompetent. I think she acted crazy or she was crazy, maybe. Um, (laughs) Let's see here. So then it's discovered that that, uh, sorry, do, do, do. okay, so he's indicted, then Happy Jack's indicted as an accomplice to murder with Ruth as the star witness, so she's like, I'm testifying, bitch. Against him? Uh-huh. Her, the love of her life? Oh, yeah. Okay. No, that's her husband. Was it? I don't know. Oh. I think he's stuck by her side, actually. <laughs> he was like, I'll be here in, with, on morphine if you need me. <laughs> Poor guy. <laughs> Poor, he's just in the courtroom shooting up. <laughs> I'm a doctor. She said, I'm going to be hanged for something Jack Halloran is responsible for. I was convicted of murder, but shot in self-defense. Um, <laughs> and then she said he removed all the evidence, and he's responsible for the whole thing, like sending her. He told her exactly what to do. Um, and then so she testified that she had gone over to their house on an invitation to play bridge and basically killed them both in self-defense after they all fought and the women physically attacked her. Because of bridge. Story. <laughs> no, because of rice pudding. Oh, right, right, right. So she said then then Happy Jack came over, took care of everything, and then like told her what to do. Oh. So on January 25th, 1933, the judge freed Happy Jack, saying the state's case was uh, inconsistent. 
And um, so her death sentence overturned. She's committed to the state's only mental institution, the Arizona State Asylum for the Insane in Phoenix. Oh. Oh, do we have a bus bust in over here? <laughs> <laughs> From the asylum? They get discount tickets to the celebrity <laughs> theater. Welcome. I don't think it's called that anymore, unfortunately. Uh, she escaped from... Wait, sir, can I just ask a question? Yes. This is the worst idea, but I'm going to ask the audience a question anyway. Is that place haunted? Is that why people are cheering? Thank you. Stop talking. <laughs> That's how to do it. Right? I open the door and then I slam it in your face. <laughs> so she escapes... So Ruth goes away. She escapes from the institution between 1933 and 1963, between 30 years of staying there. She escapes six times. Yes. Partly because they gave her a key because everyone liked her. <laughs> and, in fact, she got so good at finger waves. She was like, how you mentioned her finger waves? She was the finger wave queen. And, like, people in society would come to the institution to get finger waves from her. No. Yeah. Do you think, and I know this is wrong to ask, could she have been using the hole in her hand as the finger oh. wave thing? <laughs> you don't know. You weren't there. <laughs> Hold on, stand still. Uh, Stay still, uh, uh. Mrs. Crabapple. Stay still. <laughs> Two more. I don't know why it turns out so good. I just don't care. <laughs> 23's could do. I can't remember. Is that what, are we talking about the 30s? Yes. Okay. So in one instance, when she escaped, she walked all the way from Yuma, Arizona, to the old Southern Pacific Railroad track, along the old Southern Pacific Railroad tracks. Yes. Bend all over her shoulder. <laughs> I don't know. She escaped for the final time in October, on October 8th, 1963, and lived in San Francisco for six years. Holy shit. <laughs> she started the hippie movement. <laughs> hey, man. Uh, using a fake name and worked as a live-in maid for a wealthy family. Her identity was eventually discovered because her fucking shitty nephew who helped her escape was like, give me money or I'm fucking turning you in. And mm. I, I'm paraphrasing and I don't even... <laughs> and no, she, that's a quote from Wikipedia. Yeah. <laughs> and she was like, fuck you, my nephew. And he was like, turned her in. Wow. Apparently. That's what I read. Uh, I just, I have to say, say there, I just had a moment of fear because my grandmother was a, a live-in maid and nanny for rich people. What if it was like, <laughs> hold on a second, what if it all comes together tonight in Phoenix? I thought of that <laughs> be too. be amazing. Be like, wait, put that picture up again, and then I have to go really close. <laughs> hold on. Maybe they work together, though. I have the name of the city, but I don't remember it. Let's find out. Okay. San Francisco? Yeah. I meant, like, na area. Oh, oh, yeah. But I said city. Pacific Heights? Yeah. Okay, so her I'm identity... Name neighborhoods, the mission. <laughs> yes. <laughs> her identity is eventually discovered. She's taken back to Arizona in 1969. She hires attorneys. Basically, she's paroled and released on December in December of 1971. And she moves to Stockholm, California. Stockton? <laughs> I'm with you. It's you and me, baby. It's you and me. I am not... <laughs> Drunk? I haven't had a fucking... I have... She has not a touch of anything as far as we know. <laughs> uh, it's vodka. Give that to me. <laughs> I just get excited. Stockholm. Stockholm. <laughs> I actually suffer from Stockton syndrome. For... <laughs> Damn it. You had it. I couldn't I get do it. it. It's good. I couldn't do it because I am very drunk. <laughs> In 1983, Arizona issued her an absolute discharge, meaning she's no longer a parolee. She died um, in October of 1998 at the age of 93. Fuck. Yeah. How badly do you... Yeah, she's... There's something going on there. Yeah, there is. Eventually, there is a confession letter written in Ruth's hand to her attorney, and uh, it's, she says it's her first and only confession. She stated that she alone planned and carried out the murders with whom, uh, and it was because she and Leroy were allegedly competing for Happy Jack's affection, and she stated that she had not planned to kill Sammy, but did so after Sammy uh, had heard the gunshot and walked into the murder scene and began fighting with Ruth. And she acted alone, and uh, the whole thing, and uh, yeah, the, the letter had gotten suppressed, but it eventually came out, and that's, and, uh, oh. So she, she really did it? Like she confessed? I don't know still. Hard to say. It's hard to say. 
Because that could have been really satisfying as an ending. I know. Yes. <laughs> uh, but then, yes. I think, I think she got in a fight accident not accidentally shot them and then happy jack helped her do all this shit yeah he eventually fell out of favor with the local phoenix population wonder why slept with too many wives uh, probably this, this city was literally filled with pipe there was so <laughs> much it was everywhere you uh-huh. couldn't walk the horses were falling down or what have you <laughs> uh and he died in tucson in 1939 uh yeah and the, the letter was anonymously donated to the Arizona State Archives, the, con- the confession letter. Oh, wow. And that Arizona, Phoenix especially, is your trunk murder. Trunk murder! That was great. Thank you. The best part of these murders in these cities is that for the rest of my life, people are going to come up to me and say, you know, my grandma knew Ruth, and here's what really happened. And then they give you these little tidbits of information that you're just like, fuck, after the fact. Yeah, but you're like, oh my God, I would have never known. It's really cool. It happens in the VIP line all the time, where people come up and they're like, oh, you know the one thing about your thing? And it's like, oh, the thing that would have made it great? (laughs) Thanks. Call it the meet and greet line, or we sound like assholes. Oh, that's true. The VIP line. Oh, VIP. You know what I mean? (laughs) Yeah, but we hand out champagne and everybody gets a car. (laughs) (laughs) Right. I just want to say that uh, I feel even more disoriented being on a spinning stage. Um, And I want you guys to know that I'm using you as my marker of where we are. Who? Because of your beautiful hair and dresses. Oh. That every, every time, I mean, you're all great. Everyone's great. But every time we come around, I'm like, okay, I'm home. All right. <laughs> Everything's okay. Is it because you can't see anything but bright colors? I can't see anything. I love bright colors. I love my little pony. Um, <laughs> I'm just wondering, like, I don't know where we came in. Yeah, I don't. I think it's... You know what? They're it's, pointing. It's gone now. <laughs> A thing came down. It's gone. We can't go back out that way. We have to oh, climb no. out of here Steve Austin style. <laughs> But my upper legs are so weak. <laughs> my upper legs can't take the climb. <laughs> all right. Okay. Well, I hope, I hope you would all know that the one thing I would, would do if I come to Phoenix is the Jody Arias. <laughs> and... Again, for people, if this is your first time or you bought tickets on a whim, on a dare, <laughs> we're not cheering for Jody Arias. <laughs> that's not what's happening. Uh-uh. It seems like that's what's happening. <laughs> if you were not to investigate it, that is what just happened, but it isn't really what's happening. Yeah. Not really. If you were on Twitter and saw the headline <laughs> of that, what just happened, you yeah. would write a mean thing without reading the article. That's right. That you would be wrong. That's right. But it doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, and here's the funniest part of her. And for me, uh, I really didn't like this when it was happening real time. So I never checked into this me crime. Neither. I never paid attention to, to it or listened to it. Um, because to me, it just seemed like it had become this, uh, you know, five times worse than the OJ trial type of thing where they're like, okay, hot girl committed murder. Let's just talk about all yeah. these dirty things. And that's really kind of what it was. But, uh, you know, if you boil it down, but it's, it's a pretty fucking incredible uh, story. So um, most of this information is from a timeline that a guy named David Lore wrote for the Huffington Post. Um, but I also watched a two-part Snapped on ID. Yeah. Um, they had to give her a two-parter. She's so legendary. And then, of course, I watched this superb made-for-TV movie, Jody Arias, Dirty Little Secret. Uh, oh. Incredible. Who plays her? Oh, I'm glad you asked. A woman named Tanya Raymond, who was fucking excellent. I'm not being sarcastic. She plays Jodi Arias with this complete, like, she's, like, sexy with dead eyes, which is one of the scariest things that you can do to a person, is just be like, I'm super into you, but you have, like, doll eyes. Ted Bundy. Well, so see Ted Bundy. And she's really gorgeous, and she just is kind of, like, always just low-level, kind of uh, manipulating everybody all the time. And she also is used to getting what she wants, obviously, so when somebody's like, no thanks, 
she fucking kicks it into overdrive. So our girl, uh, Tanya Raymond, nailed it. Good for her. Yeah, she was very good. Anyhow, um, so also a lot of oh. this. Oh, there she is. That's the real Jodi Arias as a blonde. You might not recognize her. That's not courtroom Jodi. When Jodi <laughs> oh, went not? librarian for the court oh. to prove that she was, I don't know, smart or normal. <laughs> She's, is this what she always normally looked like? Well, she started out as kind of a... Uh, but she had blonde hair for a while, and then she goes brunette. By the time she has a mugshot, she has brunette hair. She kind of looks like my sister-in-law. Is that weird? It's great. Yolanda? She does look like a Yolanda. <laughs> okay. On June 9th, 2008, uh, a woman named Mimi Hall, who is friends with Travis Alexander... Um, is worried about him because he has not answered his phone uh, or showed up for work for days, for five days. Um, and she and all their friends um, were planning on going to, on a trip to Cancun, um, and, and it was the next day. And so they were trying to get a hold of him to make plans about this trip, and he wasn't answering anybody's calls. So finally she called a bunch of the friends and said, let's go to his house and check in on this because this is really weird and it's not like him at all. So they get to the house and um, he, he was a very successful businessman. He was 30 years old, but he had a 4,000 square foot house. He had drove a BMW. He was like doing very, very well for himself. Um, but he did have a roommate, in the, I think a couple of roommates in his house. And so when the friends showed up, they were like, um, is Travis here? And the friends go, no, he went on a trip to Cancun. Ooh. Which, how fucking scary yeah. would that be when you're the person going on the trip with them where you're like, no, that's tomorrow. So they all realize something terrible is happening. And so they go to check his room. Okay. And when they go into his room, it is a fucking bloodbath. <laughs> um, he, his dead body is in his shower and the bathroom is covered in blood. Um, there's blood everywhere. Uh, and there's uh, up to six feet on the walls. Oh my God. Um, and there's a bloody palm print very clearly on one of the walls. Um, his body is, he's got, uh, he was stabbed 27 times in the back. Holy um, shit. His throat was slit, and then he was post-mortem shot in the head. What the fuck? Yeah, so just fucking overkill like crazy. So... Um, also, his body had been sitting there for between four to five days. Oh my so God. it was in an advanced state of decomposition. So this fucking friends found him. Like, oh, it's right. horrifying. Yeah. So they call 911, and when they explain what's going on, the police are on their way. Uh, at one point, the 911 operator asks um, uh, this girl who called Mimi, she goes, Do you have, uh, does he have any enemies? Do you have any idea of who could be responsible for this? And she goes, yes, his ex-girlfriend, Jody, on the 911 call. No way. Yeah. So all the friends, of course, didn't like her. Yeah. Um, they went out for like uh, almost two years. And um, they're, of course, they, it was like, why are you dating this girl type of thing the mm -hmm. whole time. So when the cops are investigating the house, nothing is out of place. Nothing is taken. Nothing's missing. Um, nothing's even disturbed. And that's why the roommates thought he was gone because yeah. nothing had been used. There was like, the, the house was perfectly clean. Um, when they check the uh, washing machine, they find a digital camera inside what? and it had been run through the rinse cycle. Um, but the cops take it and they give it to the lab. I don't know, the digital camera lab. <laughs> and they're like, see what you can pull off of this yeah. thing. So, a bit of background. Uh, this all started on sep in September of 2006. So, um, Travis Alexander uh, met Jody Arias at a work conference in Las Vegas. Um, they both worked for a company called Prepaid Legal Services, and it's a described as a multi-layered marketing firm. Mm -mm, um, red flag, we it, all know. Right? Yeah. <laughs> in, the, in the thing they described, I think it was on Snap, they were like, kind of like Amway. And I was oh. like, uh-huh. <laughs> So uh, she had just gotten hired there, and this conference was basically all the, like, top sellers, and it's like a bunch of motivational seminars where they're like, here's how you can sell, too, because you're special, and you can do... And it's like, uh, what is it? It's some kind of weird, like, legal insurance something, so it's very specific. But he, in the film, Jody Arias, Dirty Little Secret, um, he's kind of presented as this, as like almost like a motivational speaker. And she's sitting, and she, she just started there. She's sitting in the crowd watching him. And she's oh. immediately into him. She was like right off. Quick question. 
what's the dirty little secret that she's fucking crazy? Because it's not a secret that she killed. I really, you think I, that the name would be Jodi Arias fucking crazy bitch. <laughs> I don't know, like something. It's not a secret. It may have been that he eventually, because he was like a, a good boy. He was very um, in, active in, his, in the Mormon church. Guys, you get up and do stuff. I won't be able to focus because, <laughs> I, as I said already, you're leaving? <laughs> oh, my. What am Okay. You'll be there. Okay, good. <sighs> you know what? You tell people you need them and they <laughs> fucking go. Hologram of Karen's therapist comes up. <laughs> Michelle! <laughs> Can you hear Karen, me, Michelle? I will always be here for you. It's, what if it is just me being a puppet? Let's get a, let's get a therapy sock. If I put it far enough away from your face, you won't be able to tell that That's it's right. there. Uh, I think she's really here. <laughs> she's in the 10th row. Um, I interrupted you. No, it's okay. Um, so, the dirty little secret. I don't care. No, Keep no, going. no. Well, I have to tell you now. Oh. Because he was very active in the Mormon church. Oh. And so she, he dated her, but everyone's like, why? And uh-huh. then he would break up with her and like, then they'd get back together oh, secretly. God. And it was all that kind of on the okay. DL type of stuff. Got it. The dirty little. She herself was the dirty oh. little secret. Oh, look inside yourself and find. Why am you I? You're the dirty secret. I'm the dirty secret all <laughs> along. <laughs> okay, so. Um, so Jody at the time lived in California. She lived in Palm Desert. We know, yes, that's right. A meth heads in the audience tonight. <laughs> I think she was over there. Um, <laughs> so there is in Jody Aris, Dirty Little Secret, there is a scene where she comes on to him after he gives his speech and she's just like, I just really liked what you were talking about. And it is so <laughs> embarrassing. Like she goes so full court press on him. I was like, Jody, no. Like <laughs> to the TV, I, my cheeks got red in the living room. I was like, she is going for it. <laughs> and he says, no thanks. Oh. Because he doesn't believe in premarital sex. Okay. But, and then she's like, well, maybe this or that or whatever. Uh, and this is in the film. Um, and then he goes, and really, I just want to get to know you. Uh, and then she's like, hard eyes. Yeah. But crazy ones. Like, <laughs> the hearts have hands. Show throbbing. them, because it's good. It's there. Hey, there. <laughs> um, and so from that point on, they spoke every day. Um, court records would later show that the couple exchanged 82,000 emails. What the fuck? 82,000 emails. No. I don't even think Vince and I have said 82,000 words to each other. <laughs> We're married. <laughs> and we really like each other. Yeah. Also, how did they sign them? Was it best? Did they change it every time? <laughs> Sincerely yours? Yeah, that's a great question. <sighs> so many questions. She would drive out. She was the one going, driving from Palm Desert to Mesa Mm -hmm. to come and visit him all the time. Mm -hmm. And essentially what I inferred from the film, Jody Arias, Dirty Little Secret, was because he didn't believe in premarital sex. (laughs) Driving. (laughs) I have this, yeah. He didn't believe in caring about her at all. Um, (laughs) And putting in the most basic fuck. Why am I... (laughs) Trashing him. Yeah, I know. We're not. We're not. We're not. I'm not. Um, But I think what it was was she would, yeah, let him do anal. Am I right, everybody? (laughs) Maybe that's the dirty little secret. She wore a pussy (laughs) today. Anal sex. Because it's like we can't do premarital sex. Sorry, I can't do premarital sex. But that's pee only. Am I right? It's in the Bible. All right. <laughs> I don't know. I'm Jewish. We can do whatever the fuck we want. Yeah. Lay that pipe. <laughs> Lay that Jewish pipe, girl. Hey. Okay, so essentially she, they're hooking up. She thinks she's going to like, in, you know, get him under her spell or whatever. Um, but he wants to keep it chill. She's always kind of trying to push it a little bit more mm-hmm. or whatever. And he's like, mm, that's okay. So she comes up with a plan. So in November 
of the year. This is two months after they meet. Okay. She decides to convert to Mormonism. Okay. Two months. Two months. No. I don't think that's how Mormonism works. I don't. I don't think you can just be like me. Yeah. <laughs> that seems interesting. Yeah. <laughs> Golden glasses, you say? <laughs> Was that the one with the salamander? We talked the about that. D- 24 Davids and the snakes. Maybe we shouldn't get into this. <laughs> Maybe we shouldn't make up things about a religion we don't know anything about. Very no, d- in a let's do it. Highly disrespectful <laughs> manner. Yeah, we might as well. Um, so, I mean, those must have been some good emails because she converts to his religion. I just can't get over that. And he, like, there's a scene in the film, Jody Arias, Dirty Little Secret, where... <laughs> His friends are like, dude, this, she's converting, that's insane. And yeah. he's like, I mean, isn't this what we do? And we're out um, and we're on our missions and we're trying, we want to get people to join the church. Like, especially, I mean, I don't know how it was in real life, but in this film, he just seems so casual and laid back all the time. He's always kind of treating her like, oh, okay, whatever. Um, so this didn't scare the living shit out of him, <laughs> which it absolutely should have. If there's ever been a red flag in the world, it's someone converting to your religion two months after you first took up. Just a note. Maybe I'm being judgmental. You guys are being very quiet right now. That's <laughs> <sighs> all right. Okay. So it takes then it's three more months after she converts to his religion that they start officially dating. So he really waits it out. And then he's finally like, fine, we can go out in public together and take pictures and stuff. So, so that's what they do. They actually go on a bunch of trips. And I think we do have a picture of them together. Um, they traveled a lot. Mm. And I think for their work, he traveled a lot. So she would go with him. Um, in the film... Jody Arias, <laughs> Dirty Little Secret. Oh, we were all holding our breath, hoping you would say there, it. <laughs> hoping I'd say a different movie. No, no, no. Um, <laughs> there's this horrifying scene I, uh, where she, he's having a barbecue at, her house, at his house, and she's basically trying to play the wife. So Aye. she's like, I redecorated. Do you want to yeah. try some of my homemade lemonade? And you're just like, no, no, oh. none of this. Um, and... All the friends are like, so are you guys going to get married or something? What's happening? And he's like, no, no, she's just excited or whatever. And in the film, she overhears them. And then she's like, oh, I'm just your side piece. And he's kind of like, oh, yeah. I mean, <laughs> um, but he, so, so ba- basically she was super crazy possessive. She didn't like him talking to other women. She didn't like that he had female friends and she checked, she like looked at his phone all the time. She checked his email all the time, but he thought it was cute. He liked that she was obsessed with him. Oh, sorry. The next, sorry. The next picture we have. Oh, Ew! like he, no, your job now, Phoenix is to go out to the thrift stores in this state. Could you imagine if you found that fucking shirt at like a St. Vincent de Paul? You're just like, <gasps> that's some fucked up shit. I'm telling you, this is the kind of thing where like in sixth grade, I would get an idea yeah. like this and I would be like, hey, to my sister, I'd just be like, sit down, I have to tell you something. <laughs> <laughs> Never uh-huh. put a guy's name on your shirt. I mean, uh-huh. all right. So... He basically, she basically confronts him and, it's, and says, are you, you know, serious about me? And he's like, I'm not, I'm 30. I'm not, like, looking for marriage right now. Mm-hmm. And essentially, like, and that's not really what we're doing or how I see it. Right. Um, so after four months of dating, they break up. And, uh, of course, Jody does what any woman would do when a guy breaks up with her. She moves to his town. So she <laughs> picks up from Palm Desert and goes ahead and moves to Mesa. Oh, my God. Um you know, 10 minutes away from his house. Um, and uh, he starts hooking up with her again. Mm-hmm. Um, always a great idea. Uh-huh. If you go through a breakup, go straight back to that person yeah. that you hate as quickly as you can uh-huh. and fuck them. Behind your friend's back. Make sure you don't tell anyone. Yeah. It's great. Um, great idea. So, me. but again, like when, as I was, you know, watching the film, Jody Arias, Dirty Little Secret... <laughs> 
Like, I kept thinking, this guy is 30 years yeah. old. Like, it doesn't make sense. No. It's someone that's totally, like, clocked on him and then just been like, we are making this happen. I was in a relationship like that in high school. We were fucking bananas. High school? Yeah. What? You know, just crazy people who do crazy oh, things yes. and it's cute. Where you're like, we're going to be married and we're going to be right. together forever? Right. But in high school? Yeah. Wow. Is that weird? We, we met in rehab. <laughs> <laughs> is that weirder? No. Yes. Our song was a Slayer song. Is that weird? <laughs> There's so much more I could say. Do it. No. <laughs> That's true love. Uh, <laughs> you're to dance. Oh, Slayer. <laughs> Honey. <laughs> Honey, do you hear? Okay. So, December 2007, uh, which is you know, December of that year, he decides that his, this part of his life is not good for him and he needs to start dating women that he wants to marry. He needs to be more in line with his beliefs and stop fucking around. Um, so <clears throat> he asks out a girl that's at his church that's a friend of his and uh, what he doesn't know, they start dating and he's super into it and Jody, who still lives uh, in Mesa, um, followed them on their dates and took pictures of them from across the street. And she was fine with it, right? She was totally fine with it. She was just checking on their date. Yeah. Just checking. Hope just it's going well. Is the date happening? <laughs> now I know it's happening. <laughs> and then pictures, of course, too. Uh, she slashed his tires twice. Oy. She slashed the date's tires once. Ooh. Well, then they're just stuck together longer. Yeah. You know what I mean? She's not thinking it through. <laughs> She's acting from the heart. Does that make me crazy? That's a, that's a mistake. Because <laughs> then they can't leave. That's right. You get one of their cards towed. Right. And then make them go to the impound lot. Right. She got really good at breaking into his house. She would, um, there was a sliding glass door that she knew that he never locked and she would go in that way. She also would climb in the doggy door, Ooh. which is, I feel like if you were home alone and you were just kind of like, can you imagine? And <laughs> someone has Why do you like him this much? What happened? Fuck, you're not winning him back this way. See yourself, <laughs> see, objective witness. <laughs> Close the door. She's just like <laughs> trying to push that plastic flap up. It's all dirty. <laughs> Fucking dirty dog paws. Honey, honey. Honey, honey. Oh, honey. Okay, so one time, this is my favorite thing of this whole fucking case. <laughs> One time, he found her hiding behind his Christmas tree. Ah! Ah. This is no ordinary <laughs> love. No ordinary love spin. <laughs> hey. Oh, guys. <laughs> guys. Oh, the visual. The visual. Even as a Jew, I see how fucking creepy that is. <laughs> it would be like if someone put a menorah on their head. <laughs> I have to translate everything to you. <laughs> oh, okay. I get it. Do now. you get it? I get it now. So disrespectful. Anyway. But also, the moment after, just think about that where you're hiding behind the guy you love's Christmas tree <laughs> because he's not dating you anymore. So you're like... <laughs> Uh, <laughs> why doesn't he love me and then he's like Jody and then you're like um, hey <laughs> hi <laughs> what where'd you get this wrapping paper <laughs> back out through the dog door <laughs> she only enters and exits his house through the dog door um <laughs> so <laughs> In an upsetting case, it's one of the most upsetting aspects. Uh, one of them. To me. Yeah. His family's all sitting on the couch oh. drinking eggnog. So that's the new girl in your life? Okay. In the film, Jody Arias, Dirty Little Secret, he comes home one time, and this seems like bullshit to me, and I, did, I couldn't find it in any of like the timelines or real things. It's very Hollywood too, but I also, it's so creepy. She actually, because it would make sense. She was a photographer. That was like a big interest of hers, and that was okay. a thing she did. 
Um, and she did take pictures of him on dates with other girls. There's one scene, he comes home with the girl he's on the date with, and he looks, and there's a wall covered in the collage of them on dates. Ew. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. that's so creepy that I'm like, hmm, mm-hmm. that seems Hollywood style. They're being symbolic. They're like, here's basically what it was like. This is, ho- this yeah. is like Homeland style crazy. Right. There's red string attached to all the pictures <laughs> for no reason. Yeah. Do you see how this date is connected to this date? Uh, Okay. So on April 20th, uh, 2008, um, apparently he, so they, after, after the, after all of that insanity, he was like, this is crazy and you, this is too much. You have to get out of my life. Well then, uh, it's like a couple months later, he sends her a text saying, I'm at a nightclub right now, and it helped me to come to the conclusion that you're one of the prettiest girls on the planet. Uh. I think he had the thing where maybe he wasn't the great, like the most solid drunk in the world. So he'd get <laughs> like, he'd drink like three Dos Equis and he's like, I gotta text some shit. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, couldn't handle his shit, yeah. it seemed like. Yeah. Because he, he, would, he would kind of get back into it with her because uh, it was convenient, and I think she was manipulating him sexually, obviously. Mm-hmm. Um, so, right? Did uh, we just start going the other way? <laughs> okay, thank you. I thought I was, the seizure had started. Are we counter, <laughs> we're now we're counterclockwise? Yeah, 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 yeah. Or clockwise? This is just like a long, one of those long table games where they try to show you, like trick you into which marbles underneath <laughs> them. <laughs> I already lost $200 at this show. <laughs> Okay, so uh, basically, <laughs> all of this shit happens, and then at the end, um, they, you know, the sexting goes on for a couple months, and then in the first week of June of 2008, Travis tells his friends that he found out that Jody broke into his Facebook, and that's when he said, "Get out of my life." Facebook's the end game. Facebook was the fucking not final the straw. <laughs> not the house. Not the dog door. Not the fucking Christmas tree. Facebook. All right. So, on June 2nd, 2008, Jody Arias uh, rented a car from Budget Rent-A-Car in Redding, California. So she's from Wairika. Uh, Redding is up there, all of nor- way northern California. It's a very scary place. Be careful when you go there. <laughs> um, <laughs> so she, she rents a car from there. And then they also found, later police found uh, receipts where she had bought gas cans in, uh, I believe it was in Reading also, that she had in the car. Uh huh. So she then uh, drives, uh, she arrives at Travis's house on June 4th, 2008. Um, is it your birthday? Or <laughs> do you just think words are sexy? Either way, God bless you. Um, so she shows up. And she's like, I miss you and, you know, blah, whatever. And mm-hmm. then he goes, I ju- the girl he had been dating, they had just broken up. Mm. So he's like, why don't you come in so I can talk to you about my feelings? And, of course, they start having sex. Now, in the film... <laughs> Jody, Jody Arias. 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 <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> Foiled. They... So they have sex, and then she starts taking pictures. They start taking pictures of each other in bed. Because um, photography is her interest, as she has shown everyone. Um, he gets up to go take a shower. He's in the bathroom, and in the film, uh, Jodi has a cigarette. She, <laughs> and I, I couldn't find any proof that this is actually how it happened, so this, again, could be the Hollywood version, but she basically sees on his phone the ex that he just broke up with is trying to talk to him. And she, as him, is like, I'm with Jody now. And then she's like, basically like, that dumb slut or whatever. And then she goes crazy and is like, telling this girl, the girl basically says a bunch of shit like, but you said that she was just a side piece Uh. that never meant anything to you and da 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 and all this shit. So the next thing that they know what happens is she goes into the bathroom with the camera and she's taking pictures of him in the shower. And she's like, yeah, you look so sexy or whatever. Basically, she takes a picture of him that there was a picture and you can see it online and I'm sure you've already seen it, especially because you're, if you're from here. Um, 
it's him looking straight into the camera, like wet from the shower. Mm-hmm. And then she told him to turn around. She was like taking pictures of the back and she, that's when she stabbed him. Now, the craziest fucking part is, okay, so, so basically that she stabs him and kills him. And then three days later, June 7th, uh, she returns the budget rental car in Redding, California. She had put 2,834 miles on it. That's a lot. And what they figured out later was she bought those gas cans so that she could get gas right. and keep it so that she was never, no one could prove that she was ever in Arizona. Yeah. So, um, a week after that, she posts on MySpace a photo gallery that's like in loving memory of Travis. Oh. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the hometown, the chick was like, you know, she had dated my our brothers, blah, blah, blah. The night be- and she took pictures with the brothers. Took pictures and shit with the brothers. Mm-hmm. Was obsessive about them. The night before she had to go, she was hanging out at a bar back home in Wairika. That's right. Didn't know it was said that way. Mm-hmm. Um, and the brother was like, come home with me. And she was like, I can't. I got to wake up early to go, like, test or um, to get questioned by these investigators. My My ex died. Like, yeah. <laughs> fucking creepy shit. And then starts telling all the details right. of it, where this guy's trapped at a bar, like, I thought we were trying to play pool. And she's like, and then, and then. So she goes into uh, the police station, and she give, voluntarily gives her fingerprints and her DNA to the police. Um, she told the detective that she talked to that she and Travis had had a romantic relationship, but they had broken up, and she hadn't seen him since she moved out of Arizona in April. Um, uh, so while they're waiting for the lab tests to come back, um, they, they, the, uh, the people that were working on recovering the, the chip in the camera, they're like, and maybe, maybe this is because it's in a movie. <laughs> but yeah, that doesn't make a ton of sense. You, you get swapped for DNA. Uh-huh. And then they put that in the microwave for five minutes. <laughs> and then over here, this evidence comes in. But basically, it all came in at the same time. In real life, it did. Uh-huh. The people that were working on the camera memory chip found a series of photos. So it's all the nude photos of them in bed. Oh and all God. of it is time stamped. So she's like, I haven't seen him since April. Well, this says June yeah. 4th. Um, and it's them in bed naked, and then it's him in the shower, and then there no. are these pictures that are that are like fuzzy that they had to work on, and they have a picture of her hand cleaning up the blood with his body in the background. So she accidentally took pictures <gasps> of herself at the scene with the body, placing herself at the scene. What the fuck? Uh huh. You see the picture. I could. Stephen and I had to look for it today, and we couldn't find it. And we saw so many terrible things. Oh, so poor many. Poor Stephen. Poor Stephen. He's like, I'm gonna start a cat podcast. <laughs> and it's now, gonna be so fun. My life's gonna be so happy. It's just gonna be happy and nice all yeah. the time. Sure, Karen and Georgia, I'll record your podcast for you. I'll pull. I'll pull a couple pictures off of Google Images yeah. for you. Uh, <laughs> we, we broke Stephen. We broke him in we half. Broke him. They get so they get the DNA, the fingerprints, then they match with her fingerprints, they match it to the palm print that was on the wall. Her blood was in the bathroom. Ugh. Um every there's there the yeah. police said that they're they'd never seen more evidence against a person <laughs> in any case. They that was a quote. What the fuck? Yeah. What is what so when Jesus. all of that comes in, they're like, okay, well then we're we're going to indict her for first degree murder. And um, they call up the police uh, up in Wairika to go arrest her. She's arrested at her grandmother's home. Um, and as she's <laughs> being led off to the police car, she says, is there any way I could get my makeup on? <gasps> for real. And the, the cop was like, no. <laughs> Puts her in the car. And so we don't, I don't have this headshot either. But her headshot, it, she doesn't have makeup Mug on. Shot? Oh. <laughs> well, in a way, it is a headshot. Yeah. I mean. She needed her makeup for her headshot. <laughs> for her. Oh, no. I've been Bro. ruined. Ruined. We broke Karen, too. <laughs> this fucking podcast. Um, 
it, she has, like, it looked like she just, like, straightened her hair, and it's, like, a really pretty brunette, and she's kind of like, uh uh-huh. It's like the other woman. It's like the woman from oh, your, yeah. her, her uh-huh. fucking headshot. Um, she looks very, it's a very natural look, very beachy. Um, <laughs> and psychotic. And insane. So she gets extradited uh, to Arizona. She enters a plea of not guilty. Um, they, uh, the Maricopa County o- Attorney's Office files a notice of intent to seek the death penalty for committing first-degree murder in an especially cruel, heinous, or depraved manner. Yeah. Um, she gets out of jail, makes bail, and then goes and does an interview with the TV show 48 Hours. No, I don't think she should have gotten out of jail. <laughs> Am right. I wrong in thinking or, that? Like she made bail. I know. You know. That doesn't... Okay. It seems unfair. Yeah. Um, Did 48 Hours bail her out? <laughs> Straight onto the set. Yeah. Uh, she, on that show, claims that she did not kill Travis, but that, in fact, it was a home invasion by a man and a woman mm. who came in. They shot Travis. They murdered him. She was just standing there, and oh. then they went to murder her. The gun jammed, so she pushed the gun away, oh. grabbed her purse. Uh-huh. She specified that. Uh, and then left high five the wall with a bloody hand <laughs> we got away <laughs> and then she drove to northern california got it uh straight through without a- alerting the cops yeah. and they were like well why wouldn't you call the police even when you got there she's like i was afraid for my life uh-huh. uh so then uh later on she does an interview with inside edition and on that, she is quoted as saying, no jury is going to convict me because I'm innocent and you can mark my words on that one. No jury will convict me. Yeah. <laughs> Why would you ever fucking yeah. say that? <laughs> oh, because you're a psychopath. Okay. Uh, so opening arguments of this trial began on January 2nd, 2012. Um, she changed her look and that was that picture with, yeah. So oh. that's her lawyer. So she's basically doing lawyer cosplay, essentially. <laughs> She's like, who in my life seems respectable? My huh? lawyer for my trial for it, murder. It, it turns out I'm the lawyer. So, <laughs> no joke, soon after this, she asked to represent herself. Oh, don't do that. Yeah, no. She did it, of course. True psychopath. Wait, I mean, she did. Oh, my God. Yeah. She's like, you know what? You know what? Sit back, bangs. I got this one. <laughs> and the judge is like, okay. And then... As her own, <laughs> acting on her own uh, defense or whatever, um, the first thing she does is try to admit into evidence letters from Travis admitting to her that he is a pedophile. What? Yes. She's just trying to fucking destroy a dead man's yeah. reputation that she killed. Oh my um, God. The prosecution immediately took the letters, proved that they were forgeries, yeah. and then. Uh, so they were not admitted into evidence. And then she said to the judge, I think I might be in over my head here. Can I get my lawyer back for real? So then she gets Fangs back. (laughs) Then her story changes. And this is in court. Her story changes that the reason uh, that everything happened because she dropped Travis's camera that day. She was there. They did have sex. They had the camera. She dropped the camera. He got so angry that he attacked her, and she had, it was self-defense. She was fighting for her life, mm-hmm. stabbing him 27, 27 times. times. Uh-huh. So, in the back. Right. In the fucking back. Yeah. He was attacking her with his with back. His back. <laughs> <laughs> that judge must have been like, uh-huh. Go on. She, so then she starts this. She starts this story that this has been a relationship of domestic abuse and very extreme physical violence, and that she was a she was basically a battered woman. Which fuck her for lots of reasons, mm-hmm. but especially for fucking that one. Yeah. Like coming in that that specific kind of lie. You know what I mean? Because that's the thing that later on people hold on to. We're like, well, you know, this happens all the time where people right. claim, and it's like. Uh, no, it doesn't. It's yeah. what psychopaths do, yeah. and there's not that many of them. Um, sorry, I <laughs> really got fired up there for a second. <laughs> that and the Christmas tree. <laughs> of course, 
there is a slew of character witnesses that come in and are just like, he fucking was a church going man. Yeah. He was a good guy. He was self made. It, he grew up, his, both his parents were meth addicts. He what? grew up with two fucking nutso, awful parents. And when he was 10, his grandma came and took them and basically, I guess, got custody. And that's when he started going to her. It was, she was the one that was Mormon. And he mm-hmm. started going to church with her. And the second he started living with his grandmother, his, you know, he bloomed and everything was great. And so like, this is truly a self-made man at yeah. age 30. Yeah. And that's basically everyone came in and was yeah. just like, yeah, no, we're not doing this at all. Yeah. Um, so, uh, then long story short on May 8th, 2012, <laughs> Jody Harris. And then there's so much more shit. And I am sure that there's a million people sitting in this audience right now going, why are you talking about the thing? But there's like <laughs> 70 million things. I, that's, I didn't know. I didn't understand why everyone was watching this one. It's, and I'm like, Oh, I'm going to go back and watch it all. I thought it was all just like girl kills guy yeah. and like, Oh, she's hot. So whatever. Yeah. And it's like, it's the twists and like Nancy Grace was right. The twists and turns were fucking nuts. <laughs> It, can we, can really quick, because Nancy, she really, if you take Whoa. a look at the stages, I think the one day that I decided not to get involved in the Jody Arias case was because I was watching Nancy Grace talk about Jody Arias, and I was like, I might be on her side. You're a lunatic. <laughs> look at how she's doing like a Courtney, like 90s Courtney Love in the top right corner. She she went through a barrette phase. What the fuck? That I don't know. I did too when I was like 18 and a riot girl. Yeah, I did this too. Not, I did too. It's like when your bangs are growing out. You know what? That's you know what it is. She had a hair person that was like, no, you know what? It looks really good oh, on yeah, you. Yeah. And she was like, does it? I think. I, is it too young for me? Oh, no, Nan- you, Nancy. Nancy. She was so mad. <laughs> But then she was happy because on May 8th, 2012, Jody Arias was found guilty of first degree murder and sentenced to life in prison without parole. (laughs) The Associated Press said the case was a circus and a runaway train and that it grew into a worldwide sensation as thousands followed the trial via a live unedited web feed, which I didn't know. You could, you could watch that thing in real time. Which is equal sounds equally insanely exciting and then like the most boring thing yeah. ever. Because in between time and court yeah. cases is like, oh my god. We'd like god. to file for motion, blah 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 blah. I know. Point I, two. Cut the motions. We don't need every motion. <laughs> um for fans, the Arias trial became a live daytime soap opera. With its mix of jealousy, religion, murder, and sex, the Jody Arias case shows what happens when the justice system becomes entertainment. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Nancy Grace. <laughs> and then I accidentally left on a picture of a beautiful young detective <laughs> named Nathaniel Mendez. Oh. That's just on my last... I wasn't taking him off because I was going to show him to my sister. Like, did you ever see a guy this hot? <laughs> and it got printed in color, which is it's going right see. into the memory book. <laughs> he was there and he was like, this crazy bitch bought gas cans in Northern California. That's a strong chin he's got there. No, he is a, he's a detective and he's going to detect some shit, Jody. <laughs> you can't. Get well, Karen, away. But guess who we have here tonight? No! He's going to do a magic mic dance for you. <laughs> he retired from detectiving and now he's a sex dancer. <laughs> and I'm sorry, I probably left out some good stuff, but that's the case of uh, Jody Arias, everybody. That was great. It was a good one, Maya. Yeah. Uh, well, you know what? You know what it means when uh, the stage starts turning the other way. <laughs> that means we have time for a hometown murder. Now, now, let me just say this. Let me just tell you a couple important and crucial rules. We went over a couple of them before. Be drunk enough so that you can follow your own story <laughs> and have a good time with it. But not so much that you're just going to yell or do weird shit like that. <laughs> We want it to be local. Like Arizona, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Like around here. And then also, 
when you speak, when you tell the story, um, in your mind, it's going to be a paragraph long, and we're going to have a beginning, a middle, and an end. <laughs> and we're just going to, we're going to pull right through that in a timely manner. We have an added layer of fucking weirdness because we're spinning. Yeah. So if you've ever been in musical theater, that'd be a great, this would be a great time for you. We would love it. If you're a mezzo-soprano, we would love, yeah. we would love to hear from yeah. you. And All also, right. the onus is on Georgia yeah. because uh, she's really good at picking people. I'm going to go right for you. <laughs> oh, she just like they that pointed was fast. at her. Okay, so here's it's over. Oh, there's steps. Holy here. shit! Okay. <laughs> hey, it's Vince. <laughs> it's Vince. It's Vince. Yeah, say hi. Hi. <laughs> What's your name? Cynthia. Hi, Cynthia. Hi. It's Cynthia. Cynthia? We, also, Cynthia. we yes. also forgot, our new rule too is that everyone's mad that they didn't get picked, so just don't worry about it. I'm very yeah. sorry. <laughs> oh yeah, the pressure is on because these are, this is now an audience of people who don't want to hear this story. <laughs> That's, it's a lot. I'm very sorry everybody, I'll keep it short and sweet. Okay, tell um, me, your friend, okay, we're spinning. That's my friend, sorry. Um, so I do have a hometown story, um, actually it's a second hand story because I'm from a really small town where I'm related to everybody. So if my mom found out I was talking about, like, a cousin, I'd have to explain what a podcast is. Yeah. And like you said, she's yes. 65. It, no, no. it wouldn't work. It's too so much. So I did hear this story from a coworker when I was working at Macy's. Um, Macy's. It's from, yeah, it's Macy's. <laughs> um, and it's about 10 years old, but it, it definitely always kind of stuck with me. And so it's kind of my favorite murder. It was the first kind of introduction into this sort of obsession with true crime. But it's about a small town near the port uh, Gallus. So um, if you're not familiar with it, we have a lot of border towns, mm -hmm. um, of course, near Arizona. And due to these border towns, we have these group of people who, they're militias, who basically patrol them. So think of a lot of untrained <laughs> patriots oh, uh -huh. with huge semi-automatic <laughs> weapons wandering around in the dark trying to keep people from crossing the border. So we have all these militias. Who have, they've not been hired by anyone to do this? No, no, they're, they're private citizens who have taken upon themselves to keep, you know, women and children out. So they okay. just, like, they go around the borders and stuff. Um, <laughs> so, uh, and so anyway, there was a particular woman, her name was Shauna Ford. And she was um, basically a, a great person. She was like a concert promoter. She ran for Senate or something like that. She was a beautician. <laughs> she also had an extensive criminal background, fraud, burglary, assault, which made total oh. sense that she was a part of this militia to keep bad people <laughs> out. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> right. So wait, during the day, she runs City Hall. <laughs> yeah. She ran for office, but she never uh, was elected, but she okay. was a go-getter. <laughs> yeah. Um, so anyway, she was a part of this militia, and the militia decided she was too crazy for them. Whoa. What? Yeah. And so they, ki they kicked her out. <laughs> she, <laughs> Jesus. <Yeah. laughs> but she, she took some friends with her and decided... She's going to start her own militia. Uh -huh. So she recruited these two gentlemen. One was named Jason Bush, and the other was, was named Albert uh, Galaxola. And Jason Bush was a white supremacist who, um, again, assaults, drugs, battery, just a stand-up guy. Red definitely percent. the guy. Yeah, definitely the guy. <laughs> and then um, Albert, I believe, had a lot of uh, drug problems and drug history, and he was a drug informant. So they knew the only way they were going to get money to fund this militia was to go and rob immigrants. So they were going to go to immigrants' houses and look for drugs because they knew that all immigrants just, you know, have drugs, I guess, <laughs> laying around their house. Just piles of cocaine on every coffee table. <laughs> I guess so. Hadn't they heard a Kickstarter? I don't <laughs> I think it was kind of before the whole GoFundMe thing. Right, 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 right. before so, that. Yeah. And they also, um, they also knew that if they had robbed an immigrant, that they were less likely to Aye. report the crime which is crazy because immigrants are more likely to be victims of crimes right. than actually commit them. But anyway, so they go into this, they, thank you. <laughs> I think someone's gonna run for Senate. Yay! Yay! For this thing. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Hashtag murderinos of color, what's up out there? <laughs> So um, they, the three of them get together and they break into the home of Gina Gonzalez and Raul Flores. It's like 5 a.m., they wake up the family and they hustle them all into the living room and they start searching for drugs. Well, the problem is they don't find any drugs because there's no drugs there. What they do find is some jewelry and some money. Well, now they have the family in the living room and what they were gonna do was basically just leave. The problem was these were not immigrants. These were U.S. citizens. Mm. 
These were Americans just like you and I who just happened to be Hispanic. So at this point, they have nothing to lose. So they proceed to shoot Gina and then shoot Raul. And I apologize, trigger warning, when their nine-year-old daughter, Brisenia, starts to cry, they no. proceed to shoot her. Oh. So as the three of them leave the home, Gina actually was still alive, but she had been playing dead because she knew that she had to get to 911. So as soon as they leave, she goes to her bedroom, she grabs her husband's gun, and she calls 911. I did not listen to the 911, but I did read the transcript, and she's essentially just telling him, hey, these people broke into my home, they shot my daughter, they shot my husband, and either they heard her or they forgot something, they come back into the home. Well, like a freaking badass chingona, she... (laughs) (laughs) Sorry. (laughs) Don't apologize. She shoots at them, and she actually strikes Jason Bush. So she shoots him, and then he run, and then they, they run out. Well, she's able to describe these people very clearly to the police, and they're all arrested. Well, during uh, the arrest and trial, Albert, who was there but didn't actually do any of the murders, he gets life in prison. Now, when Jason's in jail, they actually then tie him to another murder of another Hispanic man in New Mexico, and he gets, uh, and so he gets convicted of that murder, and then he also gets the death penalty for the death of Brisenia and Raul. Yes. <laughs> so then Shauna, at first says, oh, I wasn't there, because, you know, she was out, I don't know, beauty salon, whatever. So she wasn't there. But Gina and the other accomplices are like, no, you were there. So then finally she says, okay, well, I was there, but I didn't do any of the shooting. I was just there. But they, the prosecution's like, no, you were the mastermind. You're the reason that they're there. You can't incite violence. You can't incite hate and then wash your hands when somebody does something that you basically told them to do. So thankfully, a Tucson jury agreed with that, sentenced her to death, and she's one of three women on death row in Arizona. Oh, fuck! Oh, my God! Yes. Arizona coming through! I have to say, I'm a little bit mad at you right now because you just did that better than any episode we've ever done. (laughs) (laughs) Arizona Motorino! Tight! So So awesome! Let's hear it for her! Yay! Yay! We love it! Yes! That was great. I have chills. You're crying. I cried! I cried. Uh, <laughs> I didn't. I'm broken. <laughs> You'll get there. You'll get there yeah. someday. I cried when I said ever legs, but not when they're <laughs> just a horrible story. My therapist comes up. Hologram. Oh my God, you guys. Thank you well, so fucking much. This is... <laughs> I, who, who are they for? Our therapists. Um, we unwind them. The stage stops. I was just going to say, I feel like, uh, you know, when you're like on a cruise or whatever, and then you adjust to something and like, yeah. I'm going to, now I'm going to have to go and get my, well, my sea legs or whatever. <laughs> like, whoa, I can only be on a turning thing. <laughs> um, wow. This is am- so amazing. Yeah. Thank you guys for being such an incredible audience. Yeah. Really good. We're it's sorry really- it took us so long to come here. You guys <laughs> don't be mad. It's we really made it. great. <laughs> I love when halfway through a show I think to myself, oh, we're putting this one up. <laughs> this is fucking good. For real. This, this is amazing. Yeah. Thank you so, so good. much. Thank you so much, Phoenix. We love yeah. being here with you. And, and honestly, we say this all the time, but we have to say it because we really mean it. We won the lottery. The fact that this is <laughs> what our job is now is fucking nuts. And it's because of you guys. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. It's so nice. Uh, thank you, and please, please, please stay sexy. And don't.